Hey creeps! Since the start of the channel I've been collecting your project suggestions, all of which I put into a raffle app which will randomly select the project that I'll be making in this video today. After running the raffle, the project that was selected was the Sleepy Hollow quilt suggested by Sarah Zolezzi5646. Thank you so much Sarah for the awesome project suggestion and for taking time to comment this idea in the video comments. I really appreciate you. I made a few quilts several years back, but I have never attempted a landscape quilt. I think that this quilt making technique will be absolutely perfect in capturing the headless horseman riding daredevil through the cemeteries and forests of Sleepy Hollow. Welcome to the channel, the place to come for spooky DIY home and lifestyle content all year long. Let's go make a Sleepy Hollow landscape quilt. The first hurdle was to figure out my composition, which I employed a free AI art generator to assist me with. I was overall quite impressed with a handful of the pieces that the site produced and was able to pick out some specific features in a select few that I knew I wanted to include in my quilt composition. I took these images into Illustrator and used the clip mask function to separate the sections of the art that I liked most. Making a clip mask is quite simple. You first want to create a filled shape that covers the area of the image that you want to keep. Once you accomplish this, you bring the filled shape to the front or on top of the image, then go to Object, Clipping Mask, then Make, and voila, you just made a clipping mask. When I started this project, the chaotic part of me really wanted to start cutting and sewing fabric pieces together haphazardly and wing it. But I knew that if I took the time to mindfully design a pattern that I would be much happier with the end result. I knew that I wanted the Headless Horseman to be riding down a windy path through a forest in autumn with a sparse cemetery that presented just a few grave sites along the fringes of the moonlit trail. The time of day would be at dusk, when the sky is still a deep blue, but the moon still shines bright. So in short, the most eerily perfect fall evening in Sleepy Hollow. Once I felt good about the composition, I then started to draw in the different pieces that would later be sewn together to make my quilt top. This quilt pattern was an interesting mind puzzle because it involved creating a solid composition while also contemplating the series of steps that would be required to sew everything together. I initially thought that I would do all the different parts as appliques, but later decided against this and ultimately went with piecing everything together instead. To get an idea of my color distribution, I filled in some of the vector shapes to see what the quilt would roughly look like.
When I went to print my pattern, my printer's ink was apparently out of commission, which meant a trip to the printer. Along the way, I made a stop at the fabric store to pick up supplies. The following day, I colored in one of my pattern prints to use as my key. Wow, that was easy. And even added additional lines to divide up those problem areas for piecing and numbered each piece to be able to identify each piece later. The first day I started sewing, my process involved using tracing paper to trace out each piece on the key, then cut out all the pieces on the tracing paper, pin the pieces to the fabric, then use a transparent ruler to add seam allowance around each piece to then cut out the fabric piece with shears. This method took too long, so I came up with the alternative way by using my second pattern print out. I transferred all my added lines, numbers, and dots of color to indicate which color fabric that piece needed to be cut from. I plan to cut my pieces directly from the second printout and add my seam allowance when I cut my pieces with a rotary cutter. Modifying my process eliminated the time I was taking to trace out each piece on tracing paper and the time it took to add seam allowance prior to cutting. I found that by taping my pattern pieces to my fabric, the pieces would then lay flush with the fabric surface when I went to cut them with the rotary cutter and ruler. I just had to be mindful to leave enough space around each piece for a quarter inch seam allowance. Part of my process was to divide my quilt top into squared off sections. This meant that I could assemble each section separately, then sew all the sections together easily at the end, avoiding things like uneven edges and right angle seams. I used finger pressing a lot for this project for the ease of it and to avoid twisting seam allowances. By the end of day two, I had about a third of the quilt sewn above the horizon and all of the ground strips sewn together. At the beginning of day three, I switched to my new strategy and got to work on the remaining two thirds of the quilt above the horizon. I made notes on the key indicating which pieces were included in which sections and then cut them all together and then sewed them by section which was a whole lot quicker.
One pro tip that I would recommend when sewing quarter inch seam allowances is to mark that width on your throat plate with some painter's tape. That way your seam allowances are consistently even. If you're curious why I sewed my ground pieces into strips and not all together, this was to eventually add my tombstone appliques. I first sketched out my tombstone shapes and placement on my pattern key and then created templates for each using tracing paper. My plan was to have nice finished edges for my tombstones and moon by sewing my material to one sided fusible interfacing right sides together, then flipping the raw edges to the inside and fusing the fusible side of the interfacing to the quilt front. I tried one of the smaller tombstones using this method and it looked pretty abysmal, so I opted for exposed edges with heat and bond for the fusing. Even though I love the depth and moon overlapping with the leaves provided, since I decided to piece nearly all the components of this quilt together rather than do appliques like originally planned, I decided to go for a slightly smaller moon that filled a lot of the space in between the tree branches. With the quilt top completely sewn together, it was time to add the batting and quilt back. I went with a one-sided fusible fleece to iron to the backside of my quilt top to keep things clean and crisp. After ironing the fleece to my quilt top, I then cut the perimeter to be even and then cut my quilt back fabric to be the same size as the top. Because I didn't want a quilt binding to wrap around and distract from the sleepy hollow scene, I went with a no bind technique where you sew the back to the front, right sides together, leaving a smallish opening for flipping. Clipping corners and pressing seams prior to flipping makes for crisp edges after turning. my top stitching 3 8 from the edge and even mostly match my thread to make it as discreet as possible. Once I got to the quilting part of my quilt, or the part where I get to sew all the quilt layers together, I simply matched my thread to the leaves, grass, moon, and tombstones, and sewed relatively close to the edges of each element. I 
clip stitch the opening at the bottom of the quilt closed and then made a dowel sleeve attached to some hanging loops to hang my quilt later. To make the Headless Horseman and some miscellaneous embellishments, I used Image Trace and Illustrator to get the foundation of my horseman, and then went in and made edits to the horseman's shape, and then drew up pumpkins and baths to be placed in the bottom corner, as well as in the cemetery and over the moon. Before exporting my SVG files, I first selected my image, then clicked on the Divide Pathfinder option in the Pathfinder menu, and then with my image still selected, went to Object, down to Compound Path, and then Make. Completing these steps will keep your individual vectors oriented in the way that you intend, otherwise Cricut will rearrange everything so that the cut uses the least amount of iron-on vinyl. I then opened up my SVG in Cricut Design Space and went through the prompts making sure to mirror my image and select the correct vinyl type. No. Quilts are super special because they are often aesthetically pleasing, but also serve a utility function as well. They can be time capsules for history and even individual families. They're durable and made lovingly by hand and could be considered a practice of patience for how long they take to make. I can't think of another medium that provides all these things quite like quilt making. This project took longer than expected, but at the same time, it was silly of me to think that I could create a quilted wall hanging from an original pattern in such a short time frame. <laughs> Anyways, I absolutely love the end result, and thank you again, Sarah, for the absolutely great project suggestion. I'm always taking project suggestions, so be sure to write those down in the video comments to be included in the next You Asked and I Listened project raffle. And thank you, as always, for visiting my creepy craft corner of the internet and for watching till the end. Now let's see those final shots.